Pause button push. Yeah. There we go. Okay. So anyways, what this episode is going to be about is uh, we're going to talk about med kits, um, an experience I ran into last Friday, um, why it's important to carry med kits, and stuff like that. Um, we've been slacking, I know. Yep. This is week, what, three? Yeah, this is uh, weekend number three. And we're sorry. <laughs> Family and life has been throwing at us as my little one's running around <laughs> back here. He starts school uh, next week. Why is my image so much blurrier than yours? I don't know. I think your camera's a lower megapixel, lower resolution than mine. But Oh, whatever. Yeah. Anyways. Who cares? No, actually, it cleared up once you moved your phone. Oh, that's weird. I gotta adjust mine. Sorry. There we go. So, oh, because mine keeps doing the auto adjust. See, it's yeah. trying to focus. Anyway, sorry about that, guys. Um, so, dude, that's gonna drive me nuts. Yeah, I don't know why. You, mine doesn't do that. See if there's a way to take the autofocus off. Hold on. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, let me see. <laughs> Hold on. I'm gonna have to finish this one. And try to start over. Can't. He's Wait. coming back on his. I mean, I, I don't uh, know. Hold on. Let me see. No, that's... Wait, no. Yeah, hit the, the magic wand. See what the... That's no, filters. that's filters. We don't want that. I have no idea on I don't, Facebook. No. What the hell? Yeah, I don't know. Ow. Let me just turn it that way. Jesus. Uh, you Where'd can't you... because you started the video oh, the yeah. other way. Oh, God. It. So it yells at you. I don't know, dude. Okay, well, Just we're going to deal with it. Sorry, Just people do. that are down there. Anyways, so... Um, basically, we're going to talk about med kits, what we have with them. Oh, hey, look, it says I tagged you. Yep. So, dude, that's going to drive me nuts because I keep catching it out the corner of my eye. I'm sorry. Hi, Glenn. Tony. What's up, guys? Matt. Anthony. Hey, Maxwell. So, anyways. Any um, news? We've been super busy with life. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is the... I've actually been on vacation. This is my last day of vacation. Uh, I was on vacation for a week. Um, for the ones that don't know in where me and Keith live, our county fair is going on right now. So... We've been doing stuff with, with family out at the county fair. We've been running around. I've been dealing with a football field going in my backyard. Um, what's up, Maxwell? Um, so on and so forth. So basically... Um, it's been a fuster cluck. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my car got flooded. Yeah. Uh, as most of you have known, I've posted a couple times about it. It finally took them to the point where they're like, oh yeah, no damage is caused by the flood except your headlights, so we're going to give you $3,300 to take your $500 deductible out and give you a $2,800 check, which hopefully is in my mailbox. Score. Um, I actually want to go look at a couple cars, uh, but probably won't happen. Had to put a new coil in because, you know, that wasn't damaged, but when I pulled the coil out, I didn't tell you that, when I pulled the coil out like everybody was supposed to do, yeah, yeah there was this much oil and, well, actually, it was up over the plug of oil and water in wow. that, where the coil plug goes. So, yeah, it was not real happy. Yeah, no, I'd say not. On that note, um, screw it, let's start it. Okay. I'm Zach the Tactical Gnome, and this week we're doing What's in Your Trauma Kit? <laughs> um, we said we were going to do a medical episode. This is kind of a, we're going to start with this, and then we're going to have people on and work with some other people. Yep. And and expand. You unfortunately, well, fortunately and unfortunately, it was a crappy incident, but it's a good segue for us to get into the medical. Yeah. Um, so, uh, last Friday, I was down at, um, 
Bridgetown, Pennsylvania, seeing Slipknot. And um, concert ended. We were actually looking for a friend of ours who got kicked out of the concert. Long story short, supposedly... How the hell do you get kicked out of a Slipknot concert? Supposedly he punched somebody. They mistake an identity. Somebody thought he was the one to punch somebody, so they asked him to leave. Oh. Whatever. I don't know the whole details got of that. Got for punching somebody at a Slipknot concert. Yeah, I don't know what... <laughs> Anyways, and he's friends with me on Facebook. Um, I won't mention his name. If he wants to comment on it later, he's fine. So... While me and two other friends of ours were looking for a said person, like, we're literally walking. If you've ever been to a concert at Key Bank Pavilion, uh, which was known as Post Gazette or First Niagara or yeah. Star Lake or whatever you guys want to call it. So at the end of the night, like, they're just stacking, like, chairs, like, throwing lawn chairs that people rent in stacks. And I actually found a really nice pair of glasses as we're leaving. Like, nice. nice pair of Oakley sunglasses sitting in one of the cup holders. I was like, ooh! Threw them on my head. Not saying that I was stealing them, but... Finders, keepers, losers. Exactly. I was actually <laughs> looking for money, because I'm sure oh, somebody yeah. would have dropped oh, them. Yeah. I mean, you know. So concert. we're walking out of the concert, and we go to catch the one thoroughfare by the West Gate. And there's... All kind of stuff there. There's bathrooms, there's vendors, uh, food vendors, beer vendors. And we're walking out, and me and my friends hear somebody shouting at somebody, and we don't think anything of it at first until the one kid. Who are you talking to, Carl? I am. Yeah, well, he sees yeah. it every now and then. Um, the one kid actually, um, we're walking out. And somebody said something about you need to stop running your mouth about being a racist or something. All I know is we turn about that point. You make no sense. Uh, and why does Key's face look like, oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Oh, no. No, no, no. No, 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 no. You're cut off on mine. That's oh, why. Because your, your thingamajig still popped up. Well, no. I don't know how to make it go away. I, I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. Anyway, just, just, yeah, whatever. So, back to the story. So what happened was, is as we turned the corner, a bunch of arguing going on, and there are two individuals there with about a group of, I'd say about 10, 15 people. The one kid says something to the other guy about being racist and being a neo-Nazi and says, knock your shit off. You know, we don't like neo-Nazis. He turns to say something to his friend. I don't see exactly who it was at that point. The neo-Nazi kid blasts this kid. One shot knocks him out. Catches him right on the left eye. Splits his left eye open. This kid hits the pavement. I mean, hard. Well, my two friends run over while this kid's brother is grabbing the neo-Nazi, getting ready to pound him. My two friends run over pin this dude to the ground all of a sudden here comes security cops everybody nobody is paying attention to the dude that's knocked out of course not so i run over to the dude that's knocked out not really kind of concerned about the neo-nazi because everybody's yeah got the aggressor's them. been taken care of granted i would love step. to put a couple boots to him for being a freaking racist prick but run over check the dude that's on the ground um his friend i don't know if it was his girlfriend or whatever um didn't really get that much information. Uh, runs over, goes to pick up his head, and I said, don't move him. Don't move his head. Don't move him at all. And he was laying on the ground. He was not responding. No sound. No, was not breathing initially. Was just out. I mean, gone out. And I, they went to, like, pick him up. And I guess later, once I found out later, I guess the girl was an EMT. So I said, don't. And it kind of made me chuckle a little bit because she tried to move him and I was like don't so she knelt down and I said just lift his head a little bit just so he can get some air because he was not actually breathing he started to breathe started to moan real bad well I reached down to kind of help tilt his head a little bit <laughs> Tyler drugs drugs are in my tummy yeah and 300 tourniquets yes yes <laughs> um I went to tilt his head a little bit and when I reached down I realized that the back of his head was split open um blood everywhere blood all over my hand i didn't have any gloves i didn't have i did not have a medical kit on me 
Shame on you. I know. Going to a concert, a lot of people were like, oh, why would I take one? Da 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 da. This is not my first rodeo at a concert. This is. Tanya has deemed me the concert medic because I've now sutured her friend's head together. I've straightened broken noses. I've treated, you know, all kind of stuff. It sounds dumb, but I've done it because nobody else is willing to, and I'm willing to help. Dude, but that's what we need to get the little individual. Like some super glue. Yes, actually, I'm. I, I need that. I need yeah, that, especially cool. for the uh, hardcore show where my friend Levi split his head open. <laughs> I had to suture it on the parking lot. I wish I had some super glue. So we go. Oh, and I forgot four SpongeBob band aids. <laughs> I got SpongeBob by a freaking Mickey Mouse. Uh, we have Lightning McQueen, actually. <laughs> band aids. So, anyways, I reach down, grab the kid's head. My hand is covered in blood. I get up, tell the girl that's sitting there who i think is his girlfriend like i said i'm not sure hold his head i'll be right back i run into the bathroom what the hell is with bathrooms not having paper towels now it's not a single paper paper towel. towels aren't eco-friendly dude you gotta have the little air dryers There's no paper towels the toilet paper was too small and i was like this it wasn't sterile of course because it's in the bathroom so i am like screw this, this point screw i wash well them i wash my out. hands run back out my friend happens to be standing there and i was like hey throw me your shirt and he's like uh and i was like dude you got two shirts on throw me a shirt undershirt top shirt i don't care just throw me a shirt i was like you're not getting it back he goes okay throws me a shirt i reach down and i hold like now i've went from the left the dude's left side where he got punched his eyes bleeding trying to wipe a little bit of blood off of it so i can see if there's anything major there run around to the left side and i'm holding the guy's head with the shirt trying to compress the bleeding yeah. Um, yeah. Right. Why wouldn't they? Why don't you think they would let you bring the rats Gen two and stuff into a concert? I mean, there's nothing. Certain. I don't know. A lot of people don't, and you'd be surprised at places anymore. Yeah, like, I know. it's stupid. And with working with my job, like I see trauma kits all day long, like little personal eye packs right. and everything. I don't understand why a concert wouldn't, but I've heard they don't. So I have this dude's. Take it anyway if they yeah, ask you. To I have this guy's. I'm holding right. this guy's head. While he's bleeding, my hands again are now covered in blood because I've tried to resituate the guy. About that time now, now, mind you, it felt like 30 freaking minutes, dude. Like, I'm not even lying. This whole thing felt like 30 minutes, and it was probably done in 15. Yeah, when you got that adrenaline. It was your, straight. Your time. And tunnel vision yeah. is a thing. I literally experienced the tunnel vision part. I was focused on that was not focused and i literally had one of the ems guys like are you good i was like yeah i'm fine and i looked at the ems girl and she has like her sling pack now nothing against the ems there i looked at her i said do you have a pair of gloves she goes i've got my set but i don't know where my other set is because i just wanted a pair of gloves right so i could assist them i am not an emt i am not a paramedic i understand they're well trained i'm already on scene applying what they would be doing so once they got their then like it was only this girl then three more got there then i stepped away and stepped back um had to go fill out a police report because i seen what happened um actually yelled at the one cop because they wouldn't get the freaking white supremacist dude away yeah and this kid's brother is like complete in shock like pissed off upset like ready to smash this dude's face open and i'm i looked at the cop i was like get him the hell out of here and he looks at me, I was like, dude, I understand, but like, this, there's five of us holding this guy against the brick wall, and it's gonna, he's gonna take everybody out with him. Yeah. Like, you need to go. So they finally moved him, and, um, I stayed until they loaded him up on the stretch, like, they went to put him on a stretcher, realized that was a terrible idea, so they put him on, like, the soft, yeah. like, slide board. They put him on it, and it's like a collapsible little board. Almost looks like a plastic sled. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, it's, but, a, it's a standard. It's a it's, space saving backboard. It's no, the, well, no, it's, it folds up. Yeah, it's, it folds it, up so they can store it easier. Yeah, than that. but but it was it was like roll up plastic. You know, like remember the old sleds we had, like the little sheet plastic ones. Yeah, that's all it was. Yeah. So it basically, it's kind of like a makeshift uh, um, gurney because yeah. you can pick up both ends. So they loaded them on there. Um, that's why you keep it in a pocket, Jared. They, don't tell them. They took off. Um, they put him on an ambulance. Took off. So at that point in time, I had to go over and uh, fill out a police report. Just so happens to be the cop that I kind of 
slightly cussed out and was there taking the report. I apologized immediately. I said, look, man, I said, I'm sorry. This is what happened, you know. And he's like, dude, I fully understand. He's like, there was somebody there from the state state police that wanted to, and they just wouldn't listen and they're like dude we need to get him out of here um because it was going to turn bad real quick yeah so i go and fill out my report while the other girl that was there trying to pick up his head and the other guy that was there the other guy didn't even come over but he knew he already assumed that like me and this girl had it under control uh there were two emts in his group of friends the one emt impaired judgment at the same time though. well Yes, and I will state that everybody had been drinking. We were at a concert. Everybody had been drinking. Um, you want an instant way to sober up, that'll be it. Yeah, adrenaline. Um, adrenaline, tunnel vision. Like, tunnel vision is... That's one thing I want to discuss after I say this whole thing. So, um, we fill out the report, and the EMT... Was, I talked to the one girl, and she's like, how did you know what to do? She says, are you an EMT? And I says, no, I'm just... Civilian, I carry med kits and stuff at work, and I says, you know, just kind of common sense. And she goes, "Oh, she says you really should become an EMT." And I says, "Well, I'm get, I want to go through a tac med class. I really don't want to teach do that right now." Yeah. Um, but eventually, I probably will become an EMT with the fire department and stuff here, uh, if not here, the next township down. Poland, I guess, um, they'll pay for your training and stuff if you sign on with them. Yeah, and so. Sweet Tyler, I freaking awesome. Um, Tyler's a good dude. I kind of freaked. Um, we left after that. My friends made sure I was okay because, like, they were dealing with that guy. And my one friend like looked at me and he said, like, I had that blank stare, and it kind of was like an adrenaline dump slash. Yeah, you're you're coming off that adrenaline high. The last <laughs> time I dealt with somebody with a head injury. Yeah. I won't say names or anything. The last time I dealt with somebody from a head injury that hit the pavement like that, granted, it was from a different type of thing. That person fell off a vehicle. I won't say any more than that. That person died. Shit. And, um... Dude, Tyler got a job at Ohio Auto Workers. We need to talk, Tyler. Yes. <laughs> uh, when you get that up there to talk to them... Uh, mentioned that you're friends with us yes. because there's a guy up there named Bobby that follows both of us on Facebook, well, Instagram. Um, dude has a really nice Audi R8, by the way. Yeah, no. Ask Jared, he knows. Um, Ask him about his ankle kit. <laughs> well, yeah, and there's a company out called Frog Pod. Um, they're from Australia or England or somewhere. I looked at their trauma kit. Very small little thing. But with what I carry, it wouldn't fit, in my opinion. And I'll explain why. I'll show you guys what I carry. So that was pretty much the end of it. I got back to the car, and because of the adre adrenaline dump, uh, I I freaked out. I shouldn't have. I should have. Been, but I was afraid the guy was dead because when they put him on the stretcher, his eyes were still rolled back. Um, he was making those weird noises like when somebody hits their head like hard like you've seen yeah. in video oh, yeah. like he was making that I I legit was freaked out and I'm yeah. sorry that I was because I freaked one of our other friends out who is a neurosurgeon and um also a trauma tech and she was just like you did everything you could I said I understand it but I feel like this guy's like not gonna make it you got a little bit of uh, survivor's guilt yes exactly <laughs> that so that was friday saturday i was still a little kind of jacked up a little bit yeah um sunday i had some personal stuff to do went and got my car fixed stopped over at a friend's house and um a friend that got kicked out of the concert stood over there and was drinking with him for way too long um Monday after Monday morning, I get a text message from that kid, from my other friend who had my number and Tyler had, really wants to join. <laughs> join, join, join! Okay. I don't care. Join, join away, Tyler. Adding on mine. You should have added him to the group. So I can't figure out how to do it on the computer. Anyways, anyways. so I actually got to see the kid. Hi, Tyler. Tyler. What's going on, boys? Not a whole lot. How are you? 
Not, uh, not too bad, buddy. Not too bad. Yeah, just uh, I'm coming up Wednesday to go talk with Bobby. Oddly oh. enough, I met Bobby at uh, ORD. Nice. You guys, I don't know if you guys are aware of what ORD was. ORD? Ohio Range Day 2019 with the Keeley Seal Tactics. Yes, I did. Shameless plug. <laughs> yeah, I didn't hear about that. Nice shirt, by the way. Oh, of course. He uh, he comments on. Because I felt bad. Like, I didn't know. So Monday, I get a text message. That's I mean he hit a barrier like a like an old in his back. Everything was covered in blood when I was assessing it, so it was kinda hard to deal with. for shirts I'm asking for towels nobody had anything and I was actually so when I seen the pictures my survivor Big. It really didn't even need stitches, but at least I don't think. I can't really tell from like the picture. I didn't have a bag. And I opened my trunk and my one friend standing there and I went, I could have carried this, I could have carried this. by redoing all of my medical stuff that I've had, and I had to redo some of it. Don't, I carry at least a cat's tourniquet. And the funny thing is, is I actually commented before we... I said, I'm glad to see you guys are carrying tourniquets. And she kind of stopped me. She says, why is that? I said, I'm just glad to see that police officers. I didn't mean to, like, freak you out if I did. I said, I, said, I work at Allegheny, or, or, you know, with Allegheny County at Pittsburgh International Airport. I said, and, you know, up until, you know, they carry tourniquets, but a lot of them didn't carry them all the time. And, like, so that was a big thing for me was see cops out there carrying tourniquets and I thought it was very cool that now a lot more cops are carrying them because they see the benefit of that. An easy way, um, I'm not a fan of the rat tourniquet. The only reason that I even bring up rat tourniquets is for like children, yeah. animals, shit like that. I found that when I wear mine, I will literally run it through my belt loops and have it behind my belt and just loop the loop right here next to the belt loop and it catches and it's super low profile. Never had anyone even say remotely 
Hey, what's what's on your belt? Let me see. It looks like part of the belt. Oh, nice. I'll keep that in it's mind. Perfect. See, like yeah, you wrap. I wrap carry it around it, and then for my uh, my cat tourniquet, I buy a flip flops one, but usually I have it wrapped right here around my ankle. Okay. <sighs> Easy rapid deployment. Yeah. See, that's we switched everything around on my bags because I carry one on my bag. I carry one in my pocket at work, and we switched everything around. So I literally can rapid deploy them, pre-built all the kits for work and everything. Are you staging your tourniquets? Yes. Or are they set up to where it's pull and go? Yep. Where you can throw it right on? Yep. Or is it set up where you still have to loop it? Nope. Everything's set so, ready to go. So you have them staged like that, fold it in half, mm-hmm. and that way you have the one Velcro strap coming around, and you can wrap it around for your EDC if you're not going to have a bag or whatever. And you have shit in your pockets because I have I have way too much shit in my pockets. I carry a knife, a gun, a neo mag, an extra mag in the holster, a flashlight, and a tourniquet. All, all Holy crap, he's me. Yeah. <laughs> my pockets are very heavy. Keith remembers when we showed yeah. I was the only asshole that showed up in a play carrier. Yeah, yeah, he was. Yeah, at the yes. instructor's class. I don't nice. have a play carrier. I would have brought it, but, you know. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> instructor's class. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that guy's anyway. So cool. cool. So where are you from, actually? I'm currently right now. I'm sitting in sunny Mansfield. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> eh, it's not bad. It's, I got a nice house, a nice yard. But uh, yeah, I mean, moving up to like the Cuyahoga Falls area, probably. Well, of course, working w- there, you have to. Oh yeah, I mean, this is the opportunity of my life. Heck yeah, man. Yeah, and you have to realize, like, you know, he's from Canfield area. I live in Berlin Center, so I'm like in between both of you guys. Yeah. I'm right out of Berlin Lake. Yeah. So, so but when I, uh, we're going to go look at houses here soon to purchase and do all that happy shit. But Paul, I don't know if you guys follow Black Iron Gunner. Yes. He does. Yes. James Plug. <laughs> Paul is, uh, yeah, so we're going to get together and do like a Northeast Ohio type shoot thing Sweet. at a uh, C4 training. Oh, nice. We gotta have, we gotta have you out for that because it's, uh, we're going to rent the, uh, I think it's like the 100 yard payout. They, they told us it was going to be like 40 bucks for the day. Oh, wow. Shit, yeah. Then we're going to try to have like probably 12 to 16 people out. Sweet. Nice. Got TA targets. They're going to be, they're going to be there. Heck so yeah. you can like play with cool steel. Nice. Yeah, see, I, yeah. I've been trying to get into a course and I'm actually probably going to go take it, whether I want to spend the $500 or not, but um, out at Alliance uh, Police Training. I only live a whole whopping... Actually, that's in Louisville. Yeah, I thought it Louisville. was in Louisville. It's closer, yeah. So it's a lot closer than I thought. Um, but I'm going to go out to... I don't know if you know who Varg Freeborn is. Um, yeah. If you want, if you were into reading, pick up a book called Violence of Mind. He wrote it. He's originally from Youngstown. And it's a very good book. Okay. And he is yeah. teaching a course out there in... Uh, Force on Force, Active Shooter, and, uh, what was the other one? CQB? Uh, yeah, CQB. And, um... <laughs> Not my thing, man. <laughs> Not my thing. I want to learn it because I think I it's... stick. I just like to have a very big Rolodex of stuff. I, I've been there, done that. Yeah. It's, I got the t-shirt, it doesn't fit right, and the coffee mug suck. Yep. It broke before he made it home. <laughs> so you're a... Yep. I'm assuming you're a vet then? Yeah. What uh, what branch? Army. Army? Cool. Yeah. But I was, uh, if you want just like regular, I call it, I'm, I'm a fan of regular guy training. Like, I shoot on the weekends. And yeah. sometimes during the week. I'm a regular dude. I have a nine to five. And I, I make pews on the weekends. That's kind of like I'm basically some- what I want to do. But I do want to go to this specific course because after reading his book, I'm like, it may be a good course to go to. I can save you 500 bucks and take you to a day at the range. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I've got some. I got some pretty cool experiences from uh, bad Farley places, if you will, <laughs> with some pretty cool bearded guys. Pretty cool bearded guys. Yeah. Probably, probably a few, yeah. maybe a few of my friends, because I have a couple friends that are pretty cool bearded guys. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we, we can did, talk. We did some Just add stuff. me on Facebook. We can talk later about the cool bearded guys. 
we'll talk offline about those dudes. But uh, yes, if you guys are interested at all, I don't know if you guys follow Ian from Root Nation. Mm. Ian Strimbeck. The name sounds. Familiar. You need to look him up. You need to look him up if you're not. Guy, I've taken like Keith knows. I've taken a bunch of classes. I've been there. I try to take as many as I can, at least four or five a year. Right. That's kind of where I, I want to take classes. Go and pistol one course I took it last what was it April I took it April I think his pistol one rifle one class has been the most knowledge building experience of my entire life wow cool yeah and I'm hosting the guy down here next year June 6th and 7th he'll be at my range sweet <laughs> great <laughs> Perfect. Right, what's that? Right over there. Nice. Uh, <laughs> nice. That's where we Nice. So, but he's gonna be about here next uh, June. If you guys are looking for it, I mean, he runs a coupon code like every couple months, so it's like four hundred bucks for both days. It's pistol one, rifle one. Ooh. Uh, eight hours a day. The round count is six hundred pistol, eight hundred rifle. So you're going to be shooting a lot. We're good. Yep. So... You guys want to get in on that? Get in on it. It's going to be a game changer. Because Ian is, like I said, he's one of the best instructors I've ever had the like, opportunity to learn from. So you get the privilege of being our first, like, live guest, <laughs> per se, that, like, we can interact with. We've had two phoned ones. Yeah. And then just random friends that have been here. So you kind of get to be the privilege of being the first live guest. Um, so basically, when, since we're... I got my daddy's brigade podcast stickers. Talking about. Ah, nice, nice. No, 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 it because help. once you, that's, I tell everybody this, one of my co-workers, he looks like a baby-faced little girl, and he's on Facebook, and he probably will see this later, Kevin, if you do, I'm sorry, but you still look like a girl, um, he, I told him, I was like, go get some beard balm or beard oil, put it on your face, you know, just wear your, like, when you have a five o'clock shadow, put it on, he actually started to grow a beard, and then he shaved it off, I was like, no! Don't do that. But he actually did start to grow. He actually had no facial hair. So you're actually a step above him. And he had none. And I'm like, dude, no, seriously. And it actually started to work. Usually I don't. Yeah, yeah. Usually I don't. A little goatee doesn't hurt. You know what? I just got lazy. I don't like You know what? No, no, this goes. This goes away. Because guess what? Gas masks don't seal around hair. Exactly. But yeah. I, 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 I do so like I don't grow beard. beard. Because I'm afraid that the Koreans are going to drop some fucking mustard gas on us, okay? <laughs> I like this guy already. Yeah. I like this guy. So, with the medical, so what you normally carry, what do you normally carry in your med kit, other than your tourniquets? What do you normally carry? Um, uh, right now I'm carrying an Odin IFAC from North American Rescue. Okay. It's got, uh, Israeli bandage. A needle chest decompression needle, quick clot, combat gauze, two Gen 7 tourniquets. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. In the in the pouch is two Gen 7, Gen 7 tourniquets. Uh, I carry rats around my belt. Um, ibuprofen, aspirin, like baby aspirin, right? And then regular, like, 200 milligram aspirin. Um, do, 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 trying to get through my head because I feel like walking in my car. <laughs> <sighs> That's like the small one, and then I have a, uh, a dedicated full trauma kit. Okay, and that's what I want to work up Scott. to eventually for in my vehicle and stuff. Like, right yeah, now, I my, carry. My trunk has it, like an active shooter response kit in it. That is actually kind of what I want to go after because of my job and where I work because I work at an international airport I think it would be wise to have something like that because let's face I'm it I'm gonna say no because 
see if we can add you to our actual page one so we can record you off the actual mic instead of off the computer mic okay bear with us folks um not that anybody's watching except on you oh my wife's watching yeah so while we're doing all this so um if you don't mind me asking since you are a guest i have three three normal questions that i ask um What since and since you were in the service, I've got to adjust one of them. So, what was your time like in the service? Who did you serve with, and where did you serve? Uh, if you can talk about service, that. I joined us. Joined us seventeen. Uh, I got stationed down in Fort Bush with Fourth Brigade Armor, Fourth Brigade Combat Team, deployed to Iraq, which was money. Um, got out. I met some pretty fucking, pretty solid dudes when I was in. They gave me all these really good connections. Um, got out. I'm not talking about any. I'm gonna skip over some things. No, no, that's fine, man. Got out of the army. Um, went back and lived with my parents when I was like 23, 22, something like that. Did the whole I'm a vet now. Make me a bro vet. Try to get big and go to college. Didn't like it. Uh, Got drunk one night, and my buddy was like, hey, man, move up to Ohio tomorrow, and I'll give you a job. You can start Monday. And so what does a drunk veteran do? They pack their shit in a duffel bag and move to Ohio on a Greyhound bus. Yeah. Yeah, that was real fun. Moved up here. Moved to Dayton originally. Um, lived with my, lived with my buddy for about six months. Then I do. Got out of that. Um moved to Mansfield started working at a juvenile like drug and alcohol treatment facility did that for like five years off and on uh, moved down to Columbus did uh, executive protection uh, security details things of that nature for some cool people nice and then uh, I've been I mean I've been on the shooting community since I was a kid but like Ohio hands down has like the greatest two A community that you can ever like meet with yeah it does I, I, I lost my job about a month ago things happened got laid off uh I was talking to a buddy of mine that I had literally only spoken with on Instagram I was like dude yeah I lost my job he's like dude shit, do you need a job I'm like yeah I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna go out and do some application he goes can you come down on Monday yeah so a guy that I literally had bought a guy Battle belts off of Instagram with. Met, met him one time. That's it. Gets me a job. Straight up. Nice. But like that's the amazingness of the 2A community that we have. Yeah, the 2A community in Ohio but, uh, has been kind of awesome. I mean, yeah. It's wonderful. Um, Alright, second question. What is your favorite firearm? I need application standards. Just gen, like... Nope, 
That's not a thing. There's no such thing as a general favorite nope. fire. <laughs> general favorite fire. All right. When you were overseas, what was your favorite weapon to use? And what was the last question I always ask? Because he pretty much covered the first question, which is the, the yeah. second. Into the panelists. I think I broke it. No, it's just. We've been wanting to do an episode on medical. We've been wanting to do stuff. So when this happened, I... ...what happened. Um, we need to do an episode on this. So today he come over. We reorganized all my med kits. Um, and basically kind of switched some stuff around. The one thing that you mentioned that I do need to get in one of... Well, both of my kits is Quick Clot. Um, which now they're getting away from, they're using other Don't get Quick Clot. Don't buy Quick Clot. Yeah. And go to, go to Meyer or, uh, your, I don't, and Giant Eagle's up there. Yeah, like Giant Eagle, yeah. Meyer and Giant Eagle. Go there and they have a much better quality without buying the name. It's the same thing as Quick Clot. I forget the actual name of it. I can, I can DM it to you later. Yep. But it's the same principle as Quick Clot. But it's cheaper because you're not paying for combat quick clot. Yeah. yeah. And it works way better. Nice. You little just... nicks on my arm, like my, I get cuts all the time yeah. doing dumb things because I like to carry stupid things and make dumb decisions when I'm Who doesn't? intoxicated. <laughs> so Sounds I, like our group friends. I experience with quick clot and things of that nature. Yeah. Emerson knives are really sharp. Yes. When you're drunk, don't play with them. Yeah. My one friend, my one friend knows that. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, he got me this one. It's a uh, Quaken. It's a Burnley Quaken. Burnley Quaken. I, I made uh, my one friend made the mistake, and for seven years he kept mouthing off to me and says, "You're gonna is like, that. Yeah, we no, made. I wasn't connected to Wi-Fi. Oh, that could so be why. Like, well, no, the Wi-Fi's that are like it's kind of draining or something. Well, that'd be why. Could be. This is your yeah. wee pieces crapping out. We may have too many lives going. Yeah. I'm just on my phone. Yeah, same. Yeah, have, you're on my phone too. We have two phones plus uh, four. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's really slow. Um, Hang on. Hold on. We're going to do some. Let's go back to my... See if that helps. Kick it off of... Well, we want to keep YouTube. Um, that's why we were trying to figure out... Did you get an in... Look on your thing. See if you got an invite to watch the podcast under hit uh, the, from the Daddy Brigade. Are you in the Daddy Brigade group? What? Yeah, is he in the group? The Facebook group or... Yeah, the Facebook, Facebook group. The Facebook... I don't know. I disable all those notifications because I get really annoyed when my phone just falling off at work. Or yeah, or yeah, yeah same here. Facebook notifications period. Actually, I mute most of the conversations because of work. Yeah. yeah. What up, Colonel Cross? Yeah. Oh, let's see. Uh, okay, we're still messing with that. Um, just go members, yeah. Some more shameless plugs. If you guys are looking for... Uh, Mill work in the Ohio area. Check out Carter Machine Works. My good buddy Vinny down there. He's also on Instagram as Monsoon underscore Tactical. Doing great work down there. They just did a job that's absolutely amazing. They uh, got together with Alex Sheedy from Central Ohio Cerakote, and they did an M81 Woodland Flux Brace Glock 19 or Glock 17 compensated with an RMR design. Absolutely beautiful. Wow. Nice. Yeah. It's beautiful. 
they did the RMR, they did the flux brace, the gun. Yeah, because I was the, looking uh, for, the, um, the arms. I was looking for somebody to local to send my uh, 19 slide to, um, just to get a little bit of work done to. Uh, I was going to do a kill shot precision, but that's probably a lot easier being local. Yeah. You still doing Cerakote and stuff, Ty? I don't think you heard it. You still doing Cerakote? Right, well, what do you want to get done to it first? Well, well I was my, just... Oh, direct. My, my, uh, yeah. I'd like to get some forward serrations put on it and an RMR cut. chance to look lately i mean i'll later on i'll add you to facebook i'll send you one of the slides that i was looking at so i can tell you right now that cutter can yeah. right now cutter for an rmr cut and you want to have your irons forward or rear or uh that matters i'd probably rather have them rear irons forward of the optic and like the optic it protects your RMR and, uh, man. Cognitively speaking, having your irons in front of your RMR is better for if you're going to run strictly dot. Okay. Because having the iron behind it forces your eye to focus on the back and then there. But if you put your irons forward of it, as you bring your gun up to present, all you're going to see is that dot because you're, you're ocular, like, you're in your, you're ocularly not going to focus on your rear sights first. You can acquire your dot quicker. And it's just easier to keep it there. Okay. Any of them, plus it protects your RMR. Okay. I'll have to look at that then. Yeah, that's an option. Right now, they can do front serrations, top serrations, uh, RMR cut, and move your battle. And it's called battle sight. You can have a battle sight cut RMR for 180 bucks. God, that's way cheaper. Yeah. That's way cheaper. Yeah. Yeah, I will definitely have to. Uh, add you on Facebook and get with you because that's uh, that's way cheaper than what uh, I was looking at. I think what was it that the whole slide milling and everything was like what, 250 Something like that. Because he was going to... That doesn't count the Cerakoting. The Cerakote is going to be an additional I think like 60 bucks. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, where the hell are we at on so that? So you're looking for under 250 for your slide? 49. Oh wow, that's way better. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think. So basically, back to the medical side. I don't really. I mean, I can grab the small kits. Yeah, grab your small kit. And... So, what's wrong? Yeah, your connection is like shit now, bad. Yeah, oh. I'm sorry. You're coming, everything's coming through fine on my end, so I don't know. That's, yeah, so everybody's been saying that. So, here's my small... Uh, the audio's coming in real slurred. Oh, is it? So, here's my small work kit. My turn kit's on the front. I've got... Uh, That's your SWAT T. My SWAT T, which I use strictly as a compression uh, dressing in the back. And then... Basically, all the content. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna check something on my connection real quick. Okay, okay. Time. That's for everybody watching. That's my pocket kit that I carry at work. I'm slacking and didn't bring my stuff. Um, he didn't bring his <laughs> stuff. My bigger kit, Keith, helped me do all this today. Uh, where's the Velcro back here? Let's see this little tab. Oh, know. yeah, okay. Um, this is a bigger kit for like a go bag. As you can see, I've got shears, I've got a rat's. Tweezers, yeah. Just that. That's for that one. Um, they all need kind of updated a little bit. Stuff moved around. <coughs> and uh, stuff like that. Those are the two small kits. And then on my work bag, which I'm not going to open, is kind of like my personal IFAC. Uh, I've got a... Cat tourniquet. I've got what all do I got in here? Uh, four by four gauze, Z fold bandage, gloves, kind of some of the other basic essentials. Um, some of the stuff that I 
realize that I'm going to need our uh, hyphen chest seals decompression. Not necessarily hyphen. Well, hyphen, hyphen but chest seals. Chest seals. Some plural decompression needles. Yeah. Um, NPAs. Yeah. Um, stuff like that. Uh, and thank you, Colonel. Um, they just need a lot of work, and it's basically that's basic. You can expand. I mean, there's huge kits out there. We're actually both of us are brand ambassadors for the. Um, oh, I hit the wrong button. The uh, what is it? My medic. My medic. Yeah, my medic. My medic. We're both brand ambassadors for my medic. Um, we're trying to get uh, Skinny to come on eventually. Uh, I also have a friend that said he's willing to come on who is an EMT and a first responder. Um, uh, we'll get uh, that was right. back into that. Uh, give us a second. We're adding Tyler back here. Um, but uh, that's... There we go. Yeah, we... I got audio, no video. It's coming. It's still showing connecting. But you're coming through on sound. It's not video yet. So, basically, we are adding to some of, uh, basically, there you start go. out with small kits. There we go. So, you start out with a small kit, like, stuff like I have, and then you kind of add to it more and more and more and more and more until you get what you actually want. Yep. yep. Um, shears, I have two cheap pairs of shears. I'm eventually picking up three or more pairs of the X shears. My one friend who's an EMT carries the Leatherman shears. I would like to buy. Them. I would like to buy them. I don't want to spend the money on them. Seventy-five bucks for a pair of trauma shears. Yeah. No. Yeah, I'll just buy the X shears. They're like twenty-five bucks. Yep. That's a nice setup. T Rex sidecar. Nice. Is that still your sidecar, right, Tyler? Yeah, buddy. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, we'll actually be having, uh, we, by this thing, man. Heck yeah. we gotta actually have, I gotta email them guys again. He said he would talk to the guys. Um, I picked up a, uh, holster from the, uh, USCCA expo from a company called CYA and I absolutely love it. It takes my 19 and disappears on my very short and skinny stature. And I absolutely love That's it. That's the Glock 45, right? Glock 45, 19, 17 frame. Yeah. So, talk about disappearing. It's a full size gun. Yeah. Gone. Gone. I like it. Hi, dear. How do you like the Glock 45? Glock. It's still a little glitchy, but. Uh, I'm, I'm in love with the Glock 45. I is absolutely wonderful. I've been thinking about getting one. I, my next probably Glock that I get is probably going to be a 48, and then I'll probably pick up a 45. I need just to get a 19 Wait. period. The re you're you're probably wondering why I want a 48. You have an iPhone, correct? Yes. Yes, I do. I can just FaceTime you, and I mean, my audio will just go to the. Uh, the podcast because I mean it's a podcast yeah well I'm gonna I, we're gonna have to call it here I gotta go take care of my kids oh. and stuff too right. we've been recording for about an hour and, and then our audio software crashed okay. about halfway through so we'll have you on again okay, for sure. sure yeah maybe um, uh, next episode yeah, we can have him on should be a text yeah absolutely man so with that guys yeah we kind of got a little off subject but we got most of it out and uh, everybody knew that was there knows about the story now everybody knows Yep. Um, tunnel vision shameless plugs in. Yeah, he put some sh shameless plugs in, and tunnel vision is a real thing, folks. Like they, you hear people yeah. talk about it, and um, it's a real thing, and it really does mess with you if you're not expecting it. Yep. Um, other than that, I think that's about it. We showed the kids. Uh, I got some pictures I'll put up later, and uh. Stay tuned because I think we got some good stuff going here. Heck yeah. And uh, eventually, I'll right, talk to Josh and them too. So, yep. all right. Thanks, Tyler, for Thanks coming for on. I appreciate man. it, man. Was have a good day. Yeah, you too. Yep. All right. Everybody else, guys, have a good uh, holiday weekend.
and uh, I'm going to go out to the fair with my little one and wife here in a little while. He's going to be out there. Maybe we'll run into each other. Yeah. It's a big-ass fair, so yeah, who knows? Is. He was there the other night, and I didn't even run into him. Yeah, um, we were in the same spots. <laughs> yeah, we were literally in the same spots. So other than that, y'all, Horton Knives, he's repping... Uh, Some dangerous but good. Dangerous but good. So other than that, y'all, you guys have a good weekend. Have a good holiday weekend. Stay safe. And I'm stealing this line from Opie. Stay safe. Stay alert. Stay alive. You guys have a good one, y'all. Tactical Gnome. Bearded Tank. Bearded Tank. Daddy Brigade Podcast out. out.